in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed may i encourage you that as you mentor the life of those who have gone ahead of us and as you have the privilege to look at our lives beware do not swallow everything hook line and sinker we are not perfect people do not dishonor those before you because of the limitations you see but be wise enough to edit the things you are learning joshua selman is not jesus christ do not be ashamed to edit that which is profitable for you and that which is not profitable for you there is nothing to be ashamed of so that the people who we are raising will become better versions of us this is our goal are we together but that sense of invincibility and perfection will keep destroying the church it is ugly to see ignorance and pride go together very ugly to see limitation through ignorance and pride it is amazing that sometimes we are impressed with our very little results but from the lens of superior orientation you can see the gaps in our knowledge it's time for our hearts to be open to receive is god speaking to someone write this down regardless the imperfections in the body of christ regardless the imperfections in the body of Christ Christ is still in the midst of his body regardless the imperfections in the body of Christ Christ is still in the midst of her Nigeria right now as you would have noticed is spearheading a global revival by the privilege of God's grace God is sending prophetic and apostolic envoys from Nigeria across the globe it is a rare privilege that God has given us it doesn't mean that there are no revival in other regions but for some reason God has chosen in this season to honor Nigeria and grant us the grace to spearhead revivals but my call to us is we must be careful the privilege of carrying the lamp of God to the nations does not mean we are better than other nations because I can tell you our problems are glaring before us. As anointed as we are, we have not been able to solve many problems in this nation. So God's call is an election of grace. Let it never be a reason for pride. Now God is sending us to the United Kingdom, sending us to the US. It does not mean there are no men of God there. There are mighty men of God. And even us in addressing Western nations, please let us not make it look as if everybody there has backslidden. Because there are still mighty men and women who are doing great things for the kingdom that some of us do not even come close to. There are still veterans in the gospel serving God with all their lives. I think it was John Hagee, Pastor John Hagee. I listened to him a few, um, a few days. I was just sitting just to rest, and then I decided to listen to him, and he shared something within about maybe 15 to 28 minutes. Profound revelation that gave me such an orientation. I said, look at this man's depth of conviction. An old man right now. If you call Joshua Selman anointed, you did not lie. If you say Joshua Selman is trying as far as doing his best for the kingdom, you did not lie. If you say Joshua Selman loves the Lord with all his heart, truly you did not lie. But if you say Joshua Selman has everything, you lied. No, you lied. There are many dimensions you will need in your life that may not be available here. Our, our dream is to see to it that we piece together by knowledge. You see, when we seem to sound complete, 
it is not because we were intrinsically complete it's because we became students of other dimensions of knowledge too that is why when we speak there seems to be a level of healthy balance it is not because we were balanced by default the bias of our trainings would have still affected us but because we outsourced dimensions that was not captured in our training but needed for our growth I didn't learn excellence and leadership and administration by default. We learned fasting and prayer and spirituality. Yes, it came with our training. But these other aspects did not come with our training. We had to outsource it from the intelligence that is invested in the body. And thanks be to God that we opened up our hearts to receive this. Now, let me show you how the lamb's wife looks like revelations 21 the bible calls us the bride of christ i want to show you how the lamb's wife looks like so that if that does not look like you you will know what to adjust revelations 21 verse 9 if it is true that you and i are the bride of christ then i want to show you a biblical portrait Thanks again to the experience of John that we have the privilege of seeing how the lamb's wife should look. Are you ready now? Verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, Come hither and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. So everything you are about to see is the lamb's wife. Verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending from out of heaven, out of heaven from God. 11, he said, having the glory of God and her light was like unto stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. 12, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels and the names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel verse 13 it says on the east three gates the north three gates the south three gates the west three gates next verse please and the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Uh -huh. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. Next verse. It says, and the city lieth four square. This is the verse of emphasis. Watch the Lamb's wife. And the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed. 12,000 furlongs. Let's read the last sentence together. And the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. This is balance and perfection. This is the lamb's wife. No exaggeration. No over exaggeration of dimensions to the detriment of another. Let me have seven of my gentlemen. Please come. Please come. Any one of you, just come. Just come and line up here. I want to show you something as we... Let's appreciate them. Just come and stand facing the congregation. One, two, three, four, five, six. Any one more person? Come. Protocol or whatever. It don't have to be. Just come. Now, just stand and space yourself. Look at this. Let's call every one of these gentlemen dimensions in the spirit. This together represent the seven lampstands. This man, for instance, has been given the gift in this example of revelation. You want to understand the mysteries of the kingdom? Come here. Say this man has been granted the grace for prayer and supplication. Say this man has been granted the grace for administration and leadership. Are you getting the point now? Please take note of the things I'm telling you. Say this man has been granted the grace for influence. Say this man has been granted the grace for prayer and supplication. Say this man has been granted the grace for the prophetic. And say this man has been granted the grace for wealth. Look at all of these dimensions. Now, 
when God is training this man, he will not train him as though these other dimensions exist. All he will see within the scope of his training is revelation. At the end of it, he will become a solid man with revelation, but he's going to be broke because he has not understood the principles that make for wealth. His prayer life may not be rich. Administratively, he may not do well. But you see, when you add your revelation, hold his hands, to prayer, add his hands to administrative excellence, add his hands to wealth and influence, add his hands to the ministry of prayer. He can't even remember what I asked him. <laughs> Can you imagine? He was so listening to me and now he cannot even remember what I asked him. <laughs> your people are saying prayer. And then you add this say to the prophetic and you add this to wealth and abundance. This plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this equal the body of Christ. Are we together now? The ministry of revelation in this example, uniting with the ministry of influence and the ministry of administration and leadership, prayer influence, prayer and supplication, the prophetic wealth and abundance will produce a more perfect bride. Now, this man has people learning under him. This man has people learning under him. This man and all of them are succeeding in their individual adventures except that no one of them can produce the bigger picture. So, you continue your work building your people as far as your diligence is concerned. But do not be afraid to let them know that there are other dimensions needed that may not be captured in your experience. The day you are teaching on revelation, everybody here keeps quiet and listens to you because it is your office. Where's my prayer man? The, when this man is praying, thank God for your revelation, but keep quiet and learn on prayers. Are we together? When this man is teaching on administration, don't just snore it away. It's not only demons that cause failure. Chaos and disorder can cause failure. In heaven where Satan is not, order still remain there. So you receive from this man and then grace for influence. You may be anointed but still small. You need to access to know the dynamics of becoming a voice. Can I tell you? I pray and I look forward to the day that God in his infinite mercies will walk on us men of God and purge our hearts from the guile of ego, the guile of that sense of self-consciousness to a point where we can allow the various dimensions of the body to find expression to produce the kind of bride that Jesus is returning for. We are tired of poverty in the body. We are tired of lack of character in the body. We are tired of low level dimensions of spiritual revelation, whereas there is so much more. We are tired of prayerlessness in the body. We are tired of demons accessing the lives and the destinies of people as though the body were powerless. All these possibilities may not be in my life, but they are in the body. So when you come to Jesus and say, help me, he will say, I have helped you already. What he meant is there is a dimension in the body that can solve your poverty problems. Father, I am tired of serving you. I'm a man of character, but I am poor. He will refer you to the body. The body has what it takes to bring you out of there. Lord, my ministry is not going global. He will refer you to the body. So you see, when he says all things are possible, it is because he broke himself and he gave the body. Listen to me, you have to understand this. No matter how anointed I am, I will not be able to sing like my precious people. I sacrifice my singing for preaching. A beautiful sacrifice, by the way. As far as my assignment is concerned, I used to sing better than this. Sadly, it may not return easily again. But I must be able to appreciate them. Are we together now? Yes. I want you to look at this. What dimension have you ignored? 
in loyalty to a man of God? What dimension have you ignored? And I confess our insecurity sadly. I'm not saying this to demean the body of Christ. You know this. I have respected and will ever respect the body of Christ. You will never find dishonor to the body, not from me. This is not an advocacy to look down on your pastor. This is not an advocacy to not be faithful. No, I am not teaching on faithfulness. In terms of administration and in terms of the call and assignment, everybody will have to be planted somewhere. But listen to me, I will still repeat that no single individual can carry the entirety of what is needed, but we can be beneficiaries of it. So, revelation, I repeat again, the grace for prayer and supplication. You can find this man fasting for six months, non-stop. This man can fast for two weeks dry. Do not bully this man. It is not within the scope of his call. Let him be comfortable supplying the dimension and do not look at him as less of an anointed man. Do not use the, the requirements that are in people's, if I am called to be a prophet, fasting will be my lifestyle. If I am called to the apostolic ministry, fasting will be my lifestyle. But for God's sake, do not bully the businessman and say because you are not on six months dry, you are not anointed. The nature of his call, give him the liberty to subscribe to the terms. Many of you here in your higher institutions of learning, there are other people who will be doing 15 courses and others are doing seven. Don't bully them. Every call has a job description and a requirement. Do not use the template of the prayer warrior to judge the man who is a leader. Do not use the template of the leader. And you may find the administrator, he may just fast for two days and is enough. And yet another person will tell him that God told me to fast from now until September do not look down the person and say nonsense you are just fasting rubbish there is a role that that fast has to play in building the body if the instruction did not come to you respect the one the instruction came to hold your hands together guys play the strings for me no eye has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. You look at a great ministry like this and the face that you see is Joshua Selman but I'm announcing to you that you are not exactly right thank God for leadership and thank God for sacrifice but let me tell you what equals koinonia there is an aesthetics department that has produced this beauty that you see and admire no matter how anointed I am leave me with these flowers and watch the mess that I will produce here what you are appreciating is not you are saying Joshua Selman but I'm telling you that there are diversities of gifts that have produced this. Behind the scene, there is a guitar playing. And there are my precious people playing and singing with such, such harmony and symphony. This is beyond what I can do. These gentlemen you see standing behind are incredible leaders who handle various functions within this ministry. And I can tell you they have done an incredible job. Man of God, do you have the unashamedness and the self-security to admit the contribution of others? We always like pushing everybody. I am the only one. No, those days are over. I announce to you, those days are over. Jesus is ready to press his body to a higher dimension of perfection and no single individual will use ego to stop God's program his hand has been stretched forth already there is no going back are we together 
you step into this place from 6 a.m. in the morning, you find out that there are people who are already walking, laboring. We are there, we may be praying and doing the things we are doing. But ladies and gentlemen, there are people who are working. My precious people have been standing behind the camera. You know what it means to stand for that long? Now, hear me. How about the many across the nations of the world who have donated their houses, their churches, donated their grounds, and at their own cost, they have put all kinds of LEDs to make sure that as many would sit down and follow this broadcast. How will you dare say Joshua Selman is the only reason why this is happening? Body of Christ, it's time for us to wake up. Put all our pride and prejudices I don't like this I don't like that throw it away it's the same heaven we're going I wonder what we'll do when we get there till the Christ is formed in me till your glory revealed through me no eye has seen nor ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me let me tell you the truth as a person and as a ministry I have my reservations my many reservations across the body of Christ there is no denying and there is no hiding but it's too small a reason to practice hate it is too small a reason to demean downplay no I will not do that I have my reservations there are things you will not find practice in koinonia I assure you for as long as I'm alive I, I have read my Bible and I know by the grace of God the things that are scriptural we have learned from fathers we have learned from doctrine we have learned from experience and we have learned from history it is sufficient enough to guide us and give us a worthy compass into an excelling ministry however I still do not have the right to point to another man's work and call him Beelzebub that is not given to you I can speak for myself I am too young in experience and too young in ministry to sustain the pride and audacity to point fingers at people in the ministry if ever there is anyone to do it the fathers have enough credence to speak if they speak we will honor but if they are silent we should be wise enough to be silent are we together now what the fathers are not doing dear sons let us be wise when we break ranks and jurisdiction there are consequences in the spirit Saul lost his place because he thought he could be both Saul and Samuel leave the priests to do their work if you are a king remain in your place of honor and God will bless you there listen correcting the body of Christ you've heard me say is an office let us be careful just because God is silent by his mercy does not mean he's endorsing our childishness we must be very careful many have tried it there were people who tried to carry the ark and tried to do a lot of things and they died there it was a well-intentioned project and there are many younger ministers if we are not careful we are going to bring a curse upon ourselves because of zeal without experience let us learn from history let us learn from doctrine let us learn from the fathers and then learn from the pain of others who have made these mistakes before it is foolish to make another mistake that has been made before the Bible says the things that are written are for time they are for our learning some of you here are ministers of the gospel some of you who are watching are ministers of the gospel when you do not believe a thing you just pray do not be the person pointing hands and insulting people because even Jesus was called Beelzebub I tell you sincerely by the integrity of Scripture there are many things we do not know Let let us stay on that which we know and respect the body of Christ he may not be a man of God but he's an elder enough deserving of your respect mama may not be called into any ministry but one prophetic word from her can rewrite the narrative of your destiny let me recap one more time and then we find a place to pray this is the body of Christ this is not the body of Christ 
no matter how efficient this man is he's only an effective member of the body can i tell you if koinonia is the only ministry on earth we will not be at a loss but i promise you there are many dimensions of god that we will not see it is the truth there are many dimensions of god that we will not see i bring to your memory an example i made earlier on again imagine the bible as the book of leviticus alone imagine the bible as the gospels alone with jesus at the center and jesus himself was secured to say there are many things you are going to learn beyond that which i am teaching you it will not be by me but when it comes learn it it is for your overall profiting then comes paul and you know the history of paul how could jesus point to Paul to bring the Pauline epistle a man who was a Pharisee persecuted the church where they know better people that is God for you one of these days we will see drunkards in the body of Christ becoming apostles I hope we will have the stamina to receive them and not say I used to see you I was once Rahab the prostitute but I met Jesus do not judge me by yesterday I was once Cephas but now I am Peter. I was Abraham before, but right now I am Abraham. Can I tell you the truth? Nobody in the body of Christ has been given the authority to accredit and to discredit. We do not have that knowledge. We are too limited. It is pride and even foolishness to venture into that kind of thing. The only basis for accreditation or otherwise is scripture. And even at that, we must do it graciously because there are dimensions. If you had seen what God started doing with us years ago, we would not look like what we are now. Unfortunately and sadly, when we started, people used the lens of their ignorance to write all kinds of propositions. But look what God has done today. Only God knows how many other people are still in the cave of Adulam. While we are pushing them, it is the hand of God that is moving them forward. Just because you do not believe in the ministry of women, I hope you will not ignore the next, the next Catherine Kuhlman that is coming. I hope your ego will not push them down. Listen very carefully. Reinhard Bonke has died, but where is his mantle? I hope the person who receives his mantle will be accepted within the body. E.W. Kenyon is gone. All these men have gone. But mantles do not leave the earth to the heaven. That means they will come upon the most unusual vessels. You will see politicians that will become preachers. You will see men and women that will carry dimensions of fire. I hope we will appreciate them. Remember my message on redefining revivals. That in the coming revival, it's not only men of God who will be featured. No. Elijah and Daniel and Solomon and Jesus equal the complete Bible. Not Elijah alone. This is my clarion call to the body of Christ. It is time we love Jesus and love his work more than our ego. If Christ tarries one day, this man standing before you will join the cloud of witnesses. It's not a negative confession, you see. If he comes to meet us, glory be to God, we'll be caught up with joy and gallancy. But like Paul, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But the thing is, would it be said when you are gone that you were so what's the word egocentric that you did not allow the program of God go forward I rather let koinonia close and let the program of God continue than to allow my pride to stand in the way of that which God is doing across the globe from Nigeria to South Africa to Ghana to Kenya all across Europe, America, Australia, the Caribbeans, even the places, the Middle East, the places you never imagined that the gospel and the power of God will be there. There is an emergence of men and women who are carrying fire that God is raising. Some of them are in the fivefold ministry. Some of them are in business. Some of them are in leadership. We must embrace all of them. These are the components that make the body of Christ. I remind you again, I stand on behalf of any man of God, including myself, who may have taught you wrongly, maybe innocently so. 
and I apologize to you on behalf of people who may not have shown you the way more perfectly but it's time to hide every pride and help the body of Christ for God's sake grow the world without Kenneth Hagin would have been lopsided. But the world with Kenneth Hagin alone would have been lopsided. The world without E.W. Kenyon would be lopsided. When I say mention them, you call them God's generals with an S. When our dispensation is over and if Christ still tarries, one day when they are talking about us, they will not mention Joshua Selman alone. They will say once upon a, man, a time, a man called Joshua Selman, I pray that your name will be added to that list not as a source of destruction Jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher Jesus you be lifted higher This is my call to the body of Christ all the pointing fingers the fighting up and down the negative body languages that come from denomination to denomination the ill speakings one to another I repeat to you there will be no winner there will be no winner we will only end up confusing the sheep of Jesus Christ we will only end up creating more error and the devil will slip through our pride and cause more casualty in the body of Christ than we ever are aware of. There is no denying the fact that the body of Christ is like a wounded soldier. But responsible men, please answer me. Do you run away from your wife because she is wounded? That is the time you will show her love more than ever before that is the time you will stand true to your vow in the midst of the wound that this bride of Christ has character wounds financial wounds I do not endorse licentiousness there are many things that need to be corrected in the body of Christ and we are praying that God will open the eyes of many who need to make several adjustments God is helping us all but I tell you, it is too small a reason. Nobody has the credential to point fingers at any in the body. Because from the lens of every man, you are perfect in your own eyes. It is others who will look at you and say, Apostle, would you want to adjust this and that and that? When you fight the program of God, his jealousy will take away your lampstand. Please hear me. This is a clarion call to the body of Christ. There are many people in the body of Christ today who have not died, but their lampstands have been taken. Do you know why? Because they became such an interruption to God's program. He will honor them for their contribution so far. But do not be surprised when you find out that relevant people today suddenly begin to lose relevance, regardless the efforts. It is because God will not tolerate any man interrupting his program. There is a prophet in the wilderness who is now a drunkard. He needs somebody to reach him there. There is some prostitute somewhere who needs to carry that Deborah banner. There is somebody somewhere in the Middle East. Our ego has interrupted God's program for too long. For God's sake, body of Christ. For God's sake, co-laborers. Can we for once we were able to criticize the fathers it's amazing that many of us especially to my generation of preachers it is easy to point at the fathers and say you did not do this you did not do well now the fathers have been silent
God has granted us the grace to come on stage and look how much we are messing up. We need to go back and retrace our steps. The first step is to repent from our pungency towards the fathers. We need to repent intrinsically and repent in their presence if God grants us the grace for our ill speaking of the fathers. Most of us have not lasted 12, 13, 20 years. These men have been here 57 years, 60 years in the gospel with solid integrity that some of us do not come close to. How do we insult them? Who is mentoring us into this derision? What kind of pride and attack is leading us into this nonsense? There must be repentance. The best of us must still be a student. History has whipped and punished many people because of pride. I pray that our generation will not fall prey to this. This is a clarion call from a heart of love and a heart that is sincere towards God as a contribution towards the maturity of the body of Christ. It is not a call to condemnation. It is not a call to pointing fingers. But can I tell you, whoever listens to this message and makes an honest adjustment, you will see the degree to which God will feature you because a season is about to open in the body of Christ. And I have taught you about seasons that every time seasons are opening, there are people who make the list. And there are people who do not make the list again you know I am not lying it is my prayer that God will give us longevity of relevance and the, the greatest way to secure longevity of relevance is to not be an interruption to God's program through pride for those who need adjustments in the area of character we pray that God will grant us grace to make the required adjustments and to rise to a higher level of moral excellence as he grants grace. To those who need to humble ourselves and admit that there are just things we do not know, I am praying that God will give us the self-security to admit. And members, as men of God come out to help, do not look down on them. Because sometimes it is members that join the heads of pastors and join the heads of people carrying negative statements from pillar to post. We must repent from some of these things. It is time to be instruments of bonding within the body. We are better together. We are better forever. Are we together? My final statement before we pray. Listen carefully. My final statement before we pray is to all those who look up to our lives for mentorship and for spiritual direction. There are two things I want to tell you. Number one, you must never allow the abundance of revelation that is coming to you to produce pride and disrespect. Nobody who has received from any man has the right to point hands at that man. Whether you appreciate the man or not, the fact that they make contributions in your life, you owe them your respect eternally and forever. This is what the Bible teaches. There are fathers of faith today, even if they turn and say apostle, just an example. If a father of faith turns today and say apostle, I don't know this, teach me. I will teach them on my knees. I will not teach them standing. I will teach because we have grant, been granted grace, but I will do it on my knees to remind them that even though God has granted us revelation, you still remain fathers. And we honor you as touching what you represent for some of the younger ministers coming please hear me it is not all about anointing it is not even all about character it is about understanding you must know how God's system and God's program works do not find yourself insulting somebody because of his advocacy of prosperity if you are in ignorance and you do not see the relevance of it just keep quiet and allow them serve the people God has called them to do. If somebody is involved in deliverance and you do not believe in deliverance, you just teach the truth that God has given you. But don't go to the extent of tearing down another person and being sarcastic because number one, you are wasting your time. And number two, that state is an attack itself. The zenith of transformation is not knowledge. The zenith of transformation is love. If you claim you have been so transformed, don't show me by the revelation that comes from you. Show me by the depth of love. Not pretentious love that ends on the stage. Love genuinely. You may have your reservations about the body, but that is not enough reason to hate. And hear me, 
one more time to the younger ministers that are rising please go back and edit the things we have taught you receive the things that are consistent with scripture and the things that we have taught you that is out of our pride or our insecurities politely edit them while you keep respecting us you don't need to tell us you have edited them your results will show that you have edited them are we together now can we do some prayers tonight rise up on your feet hold hands together I want you to still see this I'm going to use this example one last time and then we are done the Nigerian church this is God's goal for us unity is not uniformity there are people who need to repent they don't need transformation what they need is repentance as simple and honest as that there are people who need a lot of readjustment as far as character is concerned there are many people who need to make a lot of adjustments I have my reservations as far as the body of Christ is concerned based on the truth of Scripture that I have seen based on history experience doctrine and mentorship however I will tell you it is too small a reason to point fingers koinonia you are part of this spiritual family you should be the last person to go about rejoicing over the downfall pointing hands at people comparing people to people you may go for a program in another church and you may hear the man of God teaching he may not give you a sound as as, as an exegesis as you may be receiving here but you must you must have the heart to open up yourself and to receive what you can receive if there is nothing to learn learn brotherly kindness let's assume that the whole revelation is zero learn brotherly kindness and that's it if you look for trouble in the church you will find it there if you look for imperfection you will find it there you look for moral flaws you will find it there you look for jealousy and bitterness you will find it there but for God's sake when you look for Jesus in the midst of the seven lamb stands you will still see him standing protecting his bride with an unbending jealousy this is my message to the body of Christ Lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase lord make us instruments of your peace the walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instrument whether it is a difference based on culture or a difference based on gender or a difference based on personality or a difference based on the modus operandi of ministry or business whether it's a difference based on political affiliation or a difference based on skin color whether it is a difference based on whatever biases none of those differences is strong enough to interrupt God's program when Jesus came to die he died for all of us when the Holy Ghost came he did not choose people he came for all of us we are all products of God's mercy and at every point in our lives and our faith adventure we will need the mercy of God I have taught you the mercy of God extensively the first prayer you are going to pray right now following or in this place is for yourself Lord in any way I have contributed to the destruction of the body of Christ I repent and I ask you for mercy open your mouth and begin to pray in any way I have joined the heads of men of God together carrying stories from pillar to post comparing churches comparing men of God no that is not our assignment someone open up your mouth and pray in any way insulting orthodox churches 
insulting Pentecostal charismatic churches, insulting prophetic and apostolic churches, insulting churches that are rich in administration and excellence. Are you praying? Lord, we repent, we repent, we repent. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.